This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. You know why we walk by faith? Because there's things we don't know about. And in not knowing what's going to happen, what knowing, knowing the time of our death, not knowing what all is behind the situation, I have to put a stronger trust in God that, Lord, this took me by surprise, but nothing takes you by surprise. And so if you weren't taken by surprise, apparently you have a plan for this and you know exactly what's going to happen. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. So glad to have you here today. The ministry is growing. I just want you to know that. And of course, you know it would because anything you do that's in God's will begins to grow. In your Christian personal life, you grow and so it should be in a ministry. And this is what God is doing for me. But here's the point. He didn't do it by myself. Uh, there, when I went to my high school reunion one time, after a 10 year reunion, we had a guy there and he was talking about his father. He says, I'm following my father's footsteps. He said, my father's a self-made man. And of course, I've studied the Word of God long enough. And I know also that book that Hillary wrote about it takes a village. That's not true. It doesn't take an entire village of people to raise a child. But you can't do it on your own. I said, oh, really? He's a self-made man. He said, yes. I said, did he birth himself? He just looked at me and said, well, no. And he said, I said, did he feed himself? He said, no. I said, did he change his own diapers? No. Did he teach himself how to walk? Did he go to school without having any teachers? Did he just learn on his own? Did he teach himself to read? Of course, he answered all. He says, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I know what you're talking about, but there's no such thing as a self-made person. You see, that is arrogance to say, I'm a self-made person. A humble person says, I am what I am by the help of a lot of other people. Thank God for good teachers in my past. Thank God for good ministers in my past. And in our own lives, we can say, thank God for God and Jesus Christ, his grace and his word and his Holy Spirit, because all these things were sent to me to help me as I'm growing in my life. And so again, this is the way a ministry grows. It comes by God's grace. And I can't stand back and say, it's all been me. I do have a teaching ability. I do have a teaching gift, but you know what? God gave it to me and I have cultivated it. And God has sent his word and I've studied, I've been diligent to do those things as the word of God says, study to show yourself approved unto God. So the ministry is growing, but thank you so much because you know why? You are the helpers. You're the ones that stood on the side. You are the ones now that are contributing into this ministry. So I not only look back on ministers who have blessed me, Kenneth Hagin, or Roberts, others that I've studied after and people that I've known personally. And uh, Andrew Womack, just a good friend, and just the way people contributed to my life. I am today a product of not only God, but of his grace coming through other people to share with me and so I can learn from people. And so again, thank you so much. And so you that have shared with me of your finances, shared with me of your prayer life, thank you, thank you, thank you. I listen. I thank you for all you've done. I thank you for what you're going to do. But you know what the most important thing is? Just thank you for being there. That in the times of distress and times I've prayed, I'm sure there's when I get to heaven, there's going to be things that you can come to me and tell me that happened that I never knew about that God's going to reveal to me and show me. So again, I thank you so much. You are such a blessing. And so today I want to talk to you on a subject called the blessing of not knowing. <laughs> That's something I just talked about just now, thanking people for all that they're going to do. And one day I'll get to heaven and find out these things. But life is filled with things we don't know. And here's the thing about it. You know, I came up through a time period called the message of faith. And faith simply, in some cases, it caused people to look at themselves and begin to brag on themselves. Well, you know, I'll know things. God shows me things. The Holy Spirit shows me things. The Word shows me things. So man, I'll tell you. And then one day they are surprised to find out something happened in their life they didn't even plan on, didn't even know about. Well, welcome to the Christian life. Not everything in the Christian life is something we can plan on, something we can know about. Now, some of you are out there right now going, no, 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 that's just not true in my life. The Holy Spirit promised he'd show me things to come. I agree. And we'll talk about that. So again, uh, the, although this sounds like a strange title, and that is the blessing of not knowing, there is a blessing in the Christian life of not knowing everything. And so there are many things the scriptures tell us that we don't know, and some things that we think we should know, it wasn't necessary. I look back on my life and this, and there were some things that happened. I went through a lawsuit as in the church, lasted for three years. I, 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 during those three years, and even afterwards, I still have questions. Why didn't I know? Why didn't I see this thing happening? And the Lord just simply comforts me, just 
lets me know one day I'll understand it all. In life, I have learned some things. I've grown in some things. I've understood some things. But I still don't know everything that happened during that time period. I was totally taken by surprise by a young man that worked for us. But the point of it is it comes back to this, is I will understand all things in heaven, but I don't have to understand everything in this lifetime. And the Bible talks about in the Old Testament, the secret things belong to the Lord. You know what? That's not secret to him. They're secret to me. I don't know these things. But the secret things of life, sometimes the Lord keeps these things to himself and we don't know. Man, there's all kinds of arguments today about what about the pre-Adamite earth? Was there a creation here and was races here? Was there animals here? Where, what did Satan rule from and all that? And I believe it was here. But you know what? There's not enough information in the Bible to draw all these great specific conclusions because the Bible doesn't even plan to. It just gives you little things along the road to tell you these things. And yet there's other people say, no, no, the entire earth started 6,000 years ago. Again, I'm not going to argue with you because you know what? It doesn't matter a hill of beans in this life at all whether or not there was or whether there is. And so with all these things, again, we can talk about these things, but you know what? The world doesn't need to see us argue about them. There are certain things in life and there's a blessing in not knowing these things. Even as born again and spirit-filled and faith-filled believers, we don't know everything. First of all, let's talk about what we don't know. What does the Bible absolutely tell us we don't know? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. James 4, 14, you do not know what will happen on the morrow. If that's why, again, he's talking to those businessmen in the congregation, pray before you go do something. Don't do something based on Wall Street. Don't do, base, do something based on, I've done this before and I can do it again. Because you don't know what's going to happen to the economy tomorrow. You don't know what's exactly what's going to happen, but the Holy Spirit does. If you listen to him, he can share some things with you, but you're not going to end up knowing everything that's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know how to pray in every situation. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 says, for we know not for what to pray as we ought. There's certain things we don't even know where to begin in prayer. You ever been surprised by a situation? I have. And at that moment I go, how did we even get it? I don't even know where to begin. And that verse tells us the best place to start is by praying in tongues because we know not for what to pray as we ought. Don't give me this thing. You know every single time exactly how to pray because you would be Jesus himself if that was true. And you're not. There's only one Jesus and you ain't him, okay? But in this case, what we're simply saying is you don't know how to pray in every single situation. So that's why praying in tongues was given to us, it fills in the gap between those times when we don't know what to pray and the times we do know what to pray. Now we can pray in the Spirit. The third thing is we don't know the time of our death. I believe a believer can know generally when he's going to die. I believe you can anticipate and see it coming. I believe God will let you know that the time is coming, but you don't know the exact time of your death. Genesis 27 and verse 2, Abraham said, I am old and I do not know the day of my death. So it comes back to this, Abraham, the father of our faith, did not know exactly when he was going to die, and neither do you. And so again, we come back to it. But here's the point. What if you did know the day you were going to die? You know what? That would be like a chain hanging around your neck. What if you did know every single situation coming into your life? It'd be like a chain hanging around. You would fear tomorrow when a bad thing's going to happen. You'd begin to try to not, you would try to cause it not to happen. And you're not God. That's why he again doesn't show you everything to come, doesn't tell you exactly what's going to happen. And again, he doesn't show us the time of our death. The next thing is we don't know how to proceed in every situation. First Kings chapter three and verse seven says, I do not know how to go out and I do not know how to come in. And this was the prayer of Solomon. Solomon in all of his wisdom says, you know what? There's times I don't know whether to go in or go out. I don't know exactly what to do. In other words, there comes that trust in the Lord. Next of all, the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 42, Jesus said, you do not know what hour your Lord will come. And so we don't know the exact time of the coming of Jesus Christ. In fact, the prophecies in the word of God that are told us and the answers to these prophecies simply point to time periods, general time periods, and we don't know the exact day. In fact, we have thought we did. We've even had books come out on 88 reasons why Jesus was coming back in 1988. That didn't work, so they added another one next time. Oops, I forgot this one. He's coming back in 89. That didn't happen. And here we are, you know, many, many, many years later, and he still hasn't come. And it says in the book of Peter, there's going to come a day people say, well, we've been waiting. How long, how long, how long is it going to be? It simply says God's going to come. 
when he comes. Jesus is going to come when he comes. I believe that the Father knows. I believe the, that but uh, Jesus Christ himself doesn't know. The angels do not know when he's coming back. Next of all, we don't even know the timing of end time events. We know that end time events take place, but we don't know the exact day when this nation is going to attack that nation and when Jerusalem is going to be attacked and the rise of Antichrist. We don't know all that thing because in Acts chapter 1 and verse 7, Jesus said to his disciples, you do not know the times or the seasons which are in my father's hands. He was referring to end times, times and end times seasons because they were saying, you know, can I sit on your right hand? Can I sit on your left hand? And when's the kingdom going to come? He says, you guys forget all that. He says, all that's in my father's hands. You don't know the time or the seasons when we're coming. Here's the point. Again, what if you knew the day of your death? Wouldn't that dominate you? Can you imagine? I think it's freedom not to know everything. God knows, and when the time comes, you'll be prepared for it. But in the meantime, I don't want to know. And you know, if you know, you might think, what if what if you suddenly knew, just all of a sudden you knew you're gonna die in 48 years? Yeah, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But what about every year after that? It kept getting closer and closer. And one day you're 18 years, one day you're eight years away. I mean, pretty soon your life would be a living misery. Because why? You kept looking for that day to come and you try everything you could to get rid of it and all that, but you can't do it. It simply comes back to this. There is a blessing in the Christian life of not knowing everything. But of course, you simply come back to this verse of scripture. But doesn't the Bible say, the Holy Spirit will show me things to come? You know, there was a time when I walked into my office on a Monday morning and uh, we'd had a great service on Sunday. And I walked into my office on Monday morning and found out from my secretary there was a coup in the church. I mean, there's a group of people trying to rise up and take people with them and start their own church and all this. And I thought, what in the, how? And, and I, I went my off. I went into my office, slammed the door, and took it out on God. I said, I didn't see this coming. What in the world? How long has this been going on? Who started it? And I started asking question after question because I wanted to know and I wanted the Lord to lay it all out for me and tell me. And then finally, again, he did, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything from the Lord. I said, Lord, you promised in your word you would show me things to come and you didn't show me a thing in this situation. And the Lord spoke to me so strongly at that moment and said, I said I would show you things to come. I didn't say I would show you everything to come. And here's what he said. If I showed you everything to come, where would the walk of faith be? Huh, the walk of faith. You know why we walk by faith? Because there's things we don't know about. And in not knowing what's going to happen, what knowing, knowing the time of our death, not knowing what all is behind the situation, I have to put a stronger trust in God that, Lord, this took me by surprise, but nothing takes you by surprise. And so if you weren't taken by surprise, apparently you have a plan for this and you know exactly what's going to happen. In fact, God has everything planned for my life from now till I go to heaven. Plans after plans after plans, part of his destiny for my life. Now, I can miss it. But you know what? When I miss it, God has a plan to get me back into his plan if I'll just obey him. The only way I can't walk in his plan is for me to rebel against his plan and say, I'm just not going to do it. But God still has a plan for my life. And it simply comes back to this. The walk of faith simply says God has a plan to get me out of this. With every temptation, he has made a way of escape. With every temptation, present tense, he has, past tense, already made a way of escape. God made a, a plan for us, my escape from before the foundation of the world, before I was ever here. He sees every problem. I'm going to go through and has a plan to get me out of it. I can't see it because I can't see into tomorrow. My eyes are limited to today. Sometimes he'll show me things to come, but he doesn't always show me things to come every single time. He said he'd give me a word of wisdom. He didn't say he would give me all wisdom. There's no such thing as the gift of wisdom. There's a word, a tiny segment of his wisdom given to me at that moment, but I'm not omniscient. I don't know everything. So again, God doesn't show me everything to come. But the Holy Spirit does show us, does not show us everything to come. And the Spirit might give us a word of knowledge. He might show us some things to come, but he's not going to show us everything to come. Because again, where would the walk of faith be? And if we knew everything to come, there would be no essence, no even no purpose in walking by faith. This is what the offer is. We're about to go to halftime right now. They'll tell you how you can get your own copy. See you after the break. As we travel through life, many Christians can become sidetracked from a walk of simple faith in God and begin complicating their faith by engaging in legalistic works of the flesh, all the while thinking that they are in faith. Then when things begin to go wrong, they wonder, what has happened to my faith? Am I missing something? In this series, Pastor Bob Yandian encourages believers to continue in the simple daily progression of faith. Five audio messages include Hindsight is 2020. It's time to grow up. Learning through suffering. 
Don't Complicate Your Miracle and Faith's Destination. To order The Walk of Faith, go to bobyandian.com or call 918-250-2207. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to schedule Bob Yandian to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to bobyandian.com forward slash invite or call 918-250-2207. When I was growing up, there was a hymn and the hymn simply said this, there are things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds the future and I know who holds my hand. It simply comes back to that. But we're talking about this. We don't always know what's going to happen tomorrow. We do not know what's gonna happen in the future in all cases. Sometimes we do. In the scriptures, God gives us a general overview, but not specifics. And the same thing is true in our Christian life. Once in a while, he will specifically show us something and the Holy Spirit will show us something that is to come. Once in a while, a word of knowledge will come to show us exactly what's going on. But listen, that is like 5%, 4% of the time. The rest of the time, we simply walk by faith. God's going to take care of us. There's no temptation coming against us that God hasn't made a way of escape and he's going to take care of us. And so again, the Holy Spirit does not show us everything to come and the Spirit of God can give us a word of knowledge, but he's not going to give us all knowledge because we are not omniscient. Here it comes back to this. Again, if we knew everything, where would the walk of faith be? I have been fully aware of many problems facing me because the Holy Spirit alerted me ahead of time, but that's the rare exception. The rest of the time, I get up each day with an anticipation in my heart. Lord, I don't know what's gonna happen today, but I know at the end of the day, I'm gonna be on top of the situation. If I'm not, the next day I'll be on top of the situation. Nothing can keep me down. I don't fight 15 rounds. I fight until the opponent, Satan, is on the mat. And there has been times I have been knocked down, but I get right back up and I'm gonna keep on doing that, Lord, because that's what your grace does for me. It comes back to this, only God is omniscient. If you show someone their future, they have no future. This is why God will not show us everything about the future, otherwise there would be no future. I don't know what you're thinking right about now, but you know what, you should be grateful very, very grateful that you don't know everything that's coming. That way you can kind of live your life in just happiness. I mean, almost like, it's almost a happiness that comes from ignorance. And that ignorance says, I don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow, but I do know that the Lord's gonna be there. I know I might walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but his rod and his staff is there to comfort me and he will bring me through. I don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow, but I do know this, I will be a success by the end of the day. All your successes, you didn't know about them. I mean, for years, you just followed out the Lord and success after success started coming. And you know what? What if you'd have known ahead of time how successful you'd be? You'd be scared. You think, I can't handle that. God lets you see things as you can handle it and God gives you things as you can handle it. So simply wise up. God knows you don't. He's smart. You're not. Trust in the one that's smart because his whole smarts is, decide, is designed by him to make you smarter in the days to come. So keep following after him. We come back to it again. Here's the good news. God is not and never has been surprised. Nothing took him by surprise. When, when Lucifer rebelled, you think God looked at Jesus and say, I wasn't planning on this. What are you gonna do? And Jesus says, don't look at me. Ask the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, don't look at me. You guys come up with the plan. It's only up to me to reveal it. So we come back to it. God has never been taken by surprise. When Lucifer rebelled, God already had a plan. God didn't make Lucifer rebel, but he knew it was going to happen because all of God's foreknowledge is what he uses to make plans for the future. He knows what's gonna happen, so he makes it just like prophecy in the word of God. God writes out all the stuff that's gonna happen, but God didn't make it happen. He doesn't make antichrist. He doesn't abuse people. He doesn't make people die. He doesn't do all those things. That is not God. What God does is he knows that's going to happen and makes provision on the other side. And in your life, Satan has attacked you in so many different ways, but God always brings you out on the other side. Many are the afflictions 
of the righteous and God is not the one who sends the affliction. Satan and the world does that. But it goes on to say, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The plan has already been put into place. And so again, we come back to it. God has never been surprised, will not be surprised. I may not know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but I know it's gonna turn out all right. God's promises and grace are always sufficient. Every day grows brighter, the promises tell us, but I may not know how it's gonna get brighter tomorrow. I may not see what that brightness is gonna be as far as circumstances or whatever, or my knowledge or understanding or revelation could be increasing. That's all got to do with the day becoming brighter. But I also know this, that whatever storm I am in, I will make it to the other side. Jesus told his disciples not how they would get the other side. He just simply said, you will go to the other side and we're all gonna make it. Unless God has told you specifically what's gonna happen in our nation, by the end of this year, we do not know for sure. Why do I say that? Because there's so many Christians right now saying, here's what God told me is going to happen in our nation. Here's what God told me is going to happen in our nation. Listen, because he told you, I'm not real sure, but you know what? I'm going to sit back and watch. If you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. The point of it is I'm not going to fret about my nation. I'm going to pray for it. I'm going to vote and do what's right. I'm going to pray for my leaders to, to be saved and to come to the full knowledge of the truth. That's be born again and become a disciple. I'm going to pray that. But you know what? When it comes to the end of the nations, I've read the end of the book and there's going to come a day when Jesus comes back and, and, and flushes this toilet that we call the world around us. In the meantime, I'm in it, but not of it. I can make a great life and Jesus can make a great life for me in a world that's falling apart all around me. And it's going to get worse in the days to come. And so it simply comes back to this, the Lord's going to take care of me. So what do I know? I, we pointed out what we don't know from the Word of God. Let's find out what we do know from the Word of God. Number one is, I do know the righteous will not be forsaken. God has promised me this in the word of God, that the uh, the righteous will never be forsaken. And so again, it may look like it. It may look like God's a million miles away. It may seem like he's not answering my prayer, but you know what? I know from the word of God, he will never leave me nor forsake me. And there's not one thing that could happen in my life he doesn't have a promise for. He didn't say he would come and finish that today or tomorrow. All I know is when it happens, it happens. In the meantime, I'm not going under. I'm gonna make it to the other side. Jesus told his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. And you know, what happened? A storm broke out in the middle of it and they began to fear for their life. He promised them they would all make it to the other side. He promised them they would go. And he said, let us pass over to the other side. And he went to sleep. I think that's the best definition of faith in most circumstances or life. If we can find a promise that says God's going to take us to the other side, we can fluff up that promise into a pillow and go to sleep on it and know we're going to make it to the other side. That's resting in the promises of God. If God promised it, it's going to come to pass. The only one that can mess it up is me by getting into doubt, unbelief, yelling at God like they did with Jesus, saying, don't you care? And of course, Jesus stilled the storm. But I believe the best thing for him to have done that situation, all the disciples, was go to sleep and understand they were going to make it to the other side. I do know the gates of hell will not prevail against me. I'm part of the church. I know that. The Bible says so. So if it looks like the gates of hell are prevailing against me, it's not going to last because the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church, of which I am part. Of. As long as I simply stand on God's promises, I will make it through this trial, this temptation, this overcoming situation coming at me will not overcome me. I will overcome it. I also know the gospel will be preached. Souls will be won. Signs and wonders will occur because Jesus promised it. And so again, I live in that time period where we're seeing all these things come to pass. I've lived through one, two, three great um, revivals. I know our nation's on the verge of another one. And so this is just the greatness of God when he pours these things out on our world. So again, the gospel will be preached. I do know that at times it looks like Satan is winning and the church is losing, but Satan is temporary and the church is eternal. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I can look around. There's times almost your heart can get discouraged at how liberalism and how and how uh, atheism and how these other things in our world seem to be taking over and more and more people are turning from God but you know what? I've read the end of the book, Jesus Christ wins, and there's going to be huge revival. Even during the tribulation, millions upon millions upon millions of people will be saved. In fact, the greatest time of evangelism the world has ever seen is yet to come during the tribulation. And so that's yet to come. So it comes back to this again. It may look like Satan is winning, but he's not going to win. The victories of a loser are temporary, but the losses of a winner 
are also temporary. So again, the victories of a loser are temporary and the losses of a winner. So we come back to it again. The Whatever a loser does, it momentarily looks like he's winning, he's lost. But you know what? It might look like momentarily I'm losing, but I'm still a winner. It comes back to the attitude of your heart. What is the attitude of your heart? That is to walk by faith in the promises of God. So no matter what conditions look like in your church, you cannot continue, you cannot continue to seek God, preach the word, and keep your trust in him and go under. That's a word to ministers. Anybody working in a church, quit looking at the attendance, quit looking at people's faces, and understand this. Do what Paul told Timothy, and that is continue to look at those who follow after God out of a pure heart. Keep your eyes on the ones following God. Quit getting your eyes on the ones that don't follow God. They'll get you discouraged. So again, no matter what conditions look like in your church, God said, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's not only the universal church, that is your local church that God promised the gates of hell would not prevail against. So your time of reaping due season will come. This is something we know. The Bible promised in due season, and you will reap. Well, when is due season? Due season. Is it tomorrow? Due season. Well, I hope it's today. It's due season. Whenever due season comes, that's what, do you realize this? Look around you. No two things have the exact seasons. Apples don't come out the same time. Oranges do, which don't come out the same time that watermelons do. Everything has a due season. And so when you know that season's coming, you can, but you can't tell the exact second everything's going to pop out. You know the general season. It comes back to this. Your time of reaping, your time of due season will come. And he promised that again, due season will arrive. In due season, you will reap if you just don't faint. So no man promised it, God did, and your answers are not complicated. Here's some simple things you can do to ensure your victory. Continue faithfully to study God's word. This should not just be for sermons, but for your own personal growth and your own personal knowledge of God. So stay with the word of God. Even when it looks like life is falling apart, stay with the word of God. Why? Because the scriptures are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Maintain a constant prayer life. Your fellowship and communion with God help you hear the voice of the Spirit when He guides. Most important in this area is praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. Believe me, there's so many times you don't know what's going on. This is the time to pray in the Holy Spirit. We know not for what to pray as we ought, but we pray and we pray in tongues and God can again show us what to do. But it comes back to it again. In the midst of times you don't know what to do, that's the best time to pray in tongues because it makes you sensitive that when the Holy Spirit does speak, sensitive to when God does lead, you will be able to understand. Next of all, keep up a life of thanksgiving and praise. God wants us to give praise and thanksgiving in the midst of every situation. You've heard this before, but praise is the highest form of faith. It gives thanks for what you don't see as yet. So again, faith, faith has a voice and that voice is thank you, Jesus. I don't know what's going on, but I thank you in advance for the answer that you've got coming. I don't thank you for the adversity. I thank you that you're with me in the adversity and you're going to be with me till the end. And I thank you, Lord, that I, even though I can't see it, you have an answer prepared on the other side. This problem is temporary. My answer is eternal. My rewards will be eternal. Next of all, never stop giving into the gospel and into God's kingdom. Seeds sown in faith and love always come back. God wants to give to you in, so you can give into every good work. And finally, be consistent to attend good meetings with good ministers and that help they help you stay on the right path. So don't give up on the word of God. Listen, I'll tell you what happens. Trouble comes your way and you don't want to watch Bob anymore. Trouble comes your way, you don't want to listen to this particular teaching. Listen, keep on listening. That's the time you need it. And in the midst of it, God will give you comfort, grace, and power to come through. Thank God for the things we do know to help us through the things we don't know. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership or call us at 918-250-2207. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.